we are honored to have Ann McGurdy, founder and CEO of Strategize and Organize, with us today. Ann is a keynote speaker, productivity coach, organizational consultant, and author. Ann will be covering as much as possible within the hour allotted to help you use Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger more effectively. But of course, it is impossible to give every detail and address every workflow situation in a one-hour webinar. The custom details are what you need Ann's services for. And Ann helps improve productivity for individuals as well as organizations of all sizes and across all industries. Her entrepreneurial upbringing and corporate background mesh with her experience as a professional business process consultant and trainer to get the necessary results for each of her clients. And she actually guarantees the re results based on the agreement you make with her before she begins. I'll be pasting Ann's contact information into the chat section for you to pick up, so contact her today to get on her schedule and take advantage of the special she is currently offering. She will give you an initial phone consultation to help you decide if Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger are the right tools for you and to decide if your office is efficient and organized as it should be. Ann may be in Arizona, but she is nationally recognized as an expert who works with people in person and virtually to customize a system to help make their lives more productive and organized. And thank you so much for your time and dedication to teaching others how to use Paper Tiger and Digital Tiger more effectively and productively. We welcome you today and thank you again for being here. All right, thank you, Janet. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. And to all of you who are out there attending this webinar today, I, you know, I just want to say thank you. Um, I know that we're all really busy, and as Janet said, we're coming up on the holidays already. So how crazy is that? It's almost the end of the year already. And you know, what do people think about when they're thinking about the holidays? They're thinking about um, getting organized and everything they didn't get done for this year. What do they need to get done? And you, you might be one of those people saying you want to get it all done before the end of the year. And I'm really you know, happy to say that using the Paper Tiger is a great tool to help you get organized for that end of the year organizing. Now, I'd like to share with you a little bit about me and how I got involved with the Paper Tiger. Back in 2002, uh, 10 years ago, um, I had a home office. And I had the traditional way of filing where I had piles of paper everywhere and once every few weeks I would go through and file them away into a file cabinet. It seemed like the only way to get things done was to just take a day aside and to finally get attacking those piles of paper. And I would put them into the traditional file folders in my file drawer and think I was doing a great job. But what happened is oftentimes I would go to look for a piece of paper and I wouldn't be able to find it. Now it's not because I'm not organized. It's not because I did, did a bad job organizing and filing all my papers away. It's because I think about different keywords when I'm filing. Uh, for instance, I may have had a file for my car. And what I came across in my piles of paper were papers for Allstate insurance and it was my car insurance so what happened was I may have filed it under car and when I realized six months later I was looking for my car insurance for some crazy reason I was looking under under a for auto so it's no wonder it was difficult to find that file because it was very difficult to remember what state of mind I was in the day that I was attacking those files initially. So the, the big exciting tool that I discovered was the Paper Tiger. Because the Paper Tiger thinks like me. It's, it can collect all my thoughts and all I have to do is put in a keyword and it will find it for me. So that's a little bit about how I got started with the Paper Tiger. It was a learning process. It, it, you do have to set up some time initially to stay focused and get the, get the, your, as I refer to it, get your inventory of files into the system. And once you have all of your papers inventoried into your Paper Tiger system, then you can manage your files 
um, effortlessly and find anything in 30 seconds or less. Now those were the days when I had the desktop version of Paper Tiger, which meant that it was a CD disk that I would download into my computer, and some people still have that, and it's called the desktop software. Today we have the Paper Tiger online version. The online version is awesome because with the online version, anywhere that you have internet web access, you can log into your Paper Tiger. And as you can see on my screen here, I am logged into my online Paper Tiger version. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the basics of how to set up your Paper Tiger. Now there is an added value to the Paper Tiger because in the last couple of years people are saying electronic information. <laughs> we all have a lot of electronic files now. We have attachments to emails. We're scanning things. People are sending us files and we're storing it on our hard drive. And now our electronic files are as disorganized as our paper files used to be. Or for some of you just getting to know the paper tiger, they may just as be as messy as your current paper files. So the paper tiger now incorporates um, using Google Drive your electronic files into the methodology of the paper tiger so that you can find your electronic files as quickly and easily as your paper tiger, excuse me, your paper files. So, so that being said, I'm going to get started here with a basic training on how to get started with the paper tiger and give you a little glimpse of what it looks like to be using your Google account to access your electronic files as well. And again, as Janet mentioned, um, I'm more than happy to speak with any of you for a 30-minute consultation to see um, how we can get you set up with your um, paper and digital, um, excuse me, a paper and digital tiger filing system. Okay, so here we go. Once you go to um, the link and you sign up for your account, you um, now can sign up to your Paper Tiger account. And the way you log in is essentially just using your, your email that is assigned to this account. And for us, for purposes of the webinar, this is my login. Okay, I'm going to say stay signed in for seven days at this computer so that I don't have to remember my password all the time. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sign in. As we're going along, for those of you who have questions, I have some questions that were um, requested at the time of people signing up. But if you think of something in the meantime, go into your chat area on your screen, please and indicate any questions that you may have, and I'll address them throughout our, the webinar today. And I may pause in a little bit with any questions that um, Janet has that I need to know about. Okay, so when you get set up with your Paper Tiger, what you're initially going to be getting is your, um, the dashboard that looks like this. Uh, the dashboard is essentially a welcoming to the Monticello company with the Paper Tiger online information. And you'll know that with the dashboard, you will learn about um, how you can use the Paper Tiger and the Digital Tiger. There'll be information about our webinars. And you can log into the webinars at any time if you want a little refresher or if you um, want to remember something about our webinar today. You can also go to our knowledge base articles and there's lots of fabulous articles in there between um, Janet, uh, my, myself, and other Paper Tiger experts. There's a, a wealth of information to teach you about how to use a Paper Tiger and essentially about how to be organized and to be more productive. And speaking of experts, there is a database of experts in the Paper Tiger that lists all of the different um, Paper Tiger experts throughout the country actually around the world. And you can go in there and go through and find all the people who are out here and you can find what experts are out there and look at their information. So you can, they're all here in alphabetical order 
and go through and choose who you're interested in working with. Okay, they're in alphabetical order, so you've got to dig deep to find who you're looking for if you know somebody's name specifically, like me. Back to the dashboard. When you have your account open, just a moment please while we go back there. The dashboard will show you your account in a, in a flash. You'll see um, how many databases you have. It'll um, show that you have your Google um, connected here, which means that I've got my Google Docs account set up to this account. And let me, I want to talk about this for a minute. Many people today have a Gmail account. They may be using it where it's simply, I'm going to go to um, Google here. Most people are familiar with Gmail just for the basic functionality of using Gmail. Or maybe some people are a little bit more advanced and they use the calendar. But this, this is a screen that is probably the most familiar to people where they have a Gmail account. They went over here, they set up an account, and they joined Google. Now some of you may have several Gmail accounts. You want to make a decision before you connect your Gmail um, account to the Paper Tiger where you want to store all of your electronic files. Those electronic files, once you make that decision, those electronic files will be stored on what is now called the Google Drive. For those who, who hear me saying Google Docs, you may see reference within the Paper Tiger to Google Docs. That is synonymous with Drive. Drive is the new um, word for how they um, title the Google Docs. Google Drive is here, this is my Google Drive here for our sample base. What essentially Google Drive is, is an electronic storage area for all of your digital files. If you look over here to the left, your Google Drive looks somewhat, excuse me, somewhat similar to having a, um, your hard drive on your computer. The, the Google Drive is set up where it has um, it has different um, it has different folders, and you can create uh, documents, presentations, spreadsheets, etc., on the Google Drive account. So for some people, you may not even need to use um, other other document management um, products. And I'm going to use the example of Microsoft. You may not need to use a Microsoft Word. Um, document, you can create a Microsoft Word, excuse me, you can create a Google document right here on your Google Drive. That's a little bit more complicated, but I just wanted to show you what it can do. On Google Drive, you can store all of your electronic information. If all of your electronic information is on your hard drive, it has the capability of allowing you to upload files from your computer. So what it's doing is it goes over to your hard drive here and it allows you to look at your entire computer, go into your documents, and you can take that entire folder and move it over to your Google Drive. And I have one book. Oh gosh, I don't know what book I uploaded in there. What you're going to do is you're going to now upload that into your Google Drive's account. And somebody sent, sent me a book on great wardrobe ideas for when you're going out on a date. So now that electronic book is on my Google Drive account. So whenever I'm going to look for that file, it'll be included in my search. So let's go back to Paper Tiger, and I'm going to talk about how we incorporate those files into your Paper Tiger account. I'm going to open up our Paper Tiger filing system, and let's get back to the basics of what that looks like. 
When you have a Paper Tiger account, we talk about locations. And locations are where you file paper items. Paper items are, someone had used the phrase, um, paper items are separated based on functionality. We have papers on our desk that may be action items. And for most people, the most common ones are reference items. So when you're looking through that pile of paper on your desk and you want to set up your Paper Tiger system, keep it simple about how you want to set up your database. The way you set up your database is looking at the locations of where you want to file items. Most people start very simply by setting up a location called Action. In your Action drawer, so let's, let's think, for instance, when you have papers that you are currently working on, what do, what do they look like? You may pick up a paper on your desk and say, oh, this is an employment agreement. And this is something that is a current item because we are in the process of negotiating with this guy, Joe Kelly. So I want to add that file to my action file drawers. So we had named the file the employment agreement, and we use keywords like Joe Kelly, personnel, and administrative. Because when I used the example earlier of um, that day of filing when you start the project, you may not remember that you filed it under E for employment agreement. You may have thought, where's that file on Joe Kelly? I can't find that. And let me show you what that might look like. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to go back to my database and say, I'm going to file today. And I'm looking for that file for Joe Kelly. Where is it? Huh, Kelly hasn't. The Irish in me wants to put a lot, an E in there. So there's, there is the file for Joe Kelly. And now we know that it's in action file number one. But as you saw, I have a funny uh, misspelling in my mind where I think of Joe Kelly as EY. And I'll put in there misspelling. And the reason I do that is so that in the future, if I can't find, a, if I'm looking for Joe Kelly's file, It'll find it even though I misspelled it. So this is really helpful for not only for when people are looking for files under a different name, but when people have a constant um, repetition, repetitious way of misspelling a name. So that, that will be now included there. Now I just put in there um, a book into our digital filing system. And in the old days, I could have taken that, it was, it was um, let's use the example, it was an electronic file where I got an online version of a book. So in the past, you, I may have printed out that book, and I think the name was Dressed. Okay, I've, I got the file called Dressed. And in the past, I would have printed that out and put it into a Paper Tiger file. But since it was an electronic file and I didn't find the need to print it out and waste the paper and to create a new uh, physical space for the file, it just went directly into my Google Docs. And you can see when I typed in the word dressed, the OCR recognition of the Google Drive immediately found that that book was available in my Google Drive. And now what I can do is I can either download the PDF and I can just open up the file or I can just know that it's over in my Google Drive account and just go over there and open it. Oops, I'm not sure why that happened. Just a minute. So you can go ahead and open it. You can download it. You can keep it on your hard drive.
And now you can go through and you can open up this little book that is now online on your computer. So you have the electronic version, you have the physical version, and if you want, you have the, the, you have the electronic version and you also can view it. And if you want to go ahead and print it, you can. And then if you wanted to, if you wanted to print it, you can go into books. These are going to be books maybe you'd want to print out. I can create a new one. I can add dress to date or whatever it was. And Diane Pemberton was the, was the author. And we're going to add it to book number 24. And then I can print it out and add it to my bookshelf. Let's find out where did we put books. These are books located in the library. So what I would do is I would print it out, maybe put it in a little binder, and put book number 24 on the spine, because that was the location number, and put that on, on my bookshelf. And now I can find that book in several locations. I can find it. It's one in the book library, but it's also available in digital format in my Google Docs. So that's a fun way to see how you can use Google Drive um, with your Paper Tiger. That's a quick overview on how to work with paper and electronic. For those of you who are still out there and wanting to say, I'm tired of all my paper files and I want to go and make everything electronic, a lot of people have said, OK, I've got 15 drawers of files and I want to go paperless. How do I get there? This is where scanning comes into place. To do the Paper Tiger initially, you don't need to scan at all because as you can see, all it is is creating an inventory of all your physical files, going in, going through your drawer, and listing all of your files, and adding keywords, and then putting them in a drawer as you have labeled them. Once that part of your project is done, all of your papers are now filed and in order. In order to now go to the next level to go electronic with these files, what you might want to do is what we do is we run a report. And I've done this for years with my clients. At the end of the, end of the year, what I've done is we go through and we create a file, excuse me, I call it a file cleanout report, even though that word's not there. And what I do is we, we attack one area. So let's attack the reference area. I want to attack my reference files, and I want to use, um, I want them in item number and see what I've got in my drawer. If I want to buy alphabetical listing, I would do action, item name. But we're going to do item number. We're going to print out, <clears throat> excuse me, this, this item, this paper tiger clean out report. And you will get at a glance everything that is in your reference file drawer. And now you can print out this report. And upon printing it, you can make a decision. Do I want to review this file and see what's in there? Do I want to just go ahead and toss it, or do I want to transfer it? And you could physically transfer it to um, an archive and off-site storage, or maybe this is one that you might want to write in a little note, digital. And then, or you could say none and just leave it there. Once you go through all the files on your cleanout report, let's you can identify all of those that you want to transfer to digital. And what you would do is then scan those individual files within that area and upload them into your Google account. And that's where I said here, you can upload it. And what I do on my hard drive is I have a folder on my desktop That's upload to Google Docs. So I scan with my scanner into a folder called Upload to Google Docs. And then when I'm ready to file 
upload into my Google Docs I can e I can go ahead and just upload the whole folder or I can upload ind individual files within that so you can add whatever you want by scanner into that folder and then upload those individually into your um, Google Drive account and then what you'll then what you do is you go back and then what I do is I go back and I, I then empty out this folder and create a new one after I do an organizing project so there's a couple of steps and you need to just you know take your time and think as you go along the process all right so back to this report you've cleaned it out and you've made some changes so let's use for instance um, articles um, ex let's see or shareholders agreement okay so shareholders agreement was one of those that we decided that we were electronically going to move over to Google Drive now after you go through the file cleanout report what you do on the paper tiger Did I close myself out? Hi guys, that's me. I jumped ahead of myself there and I closed out my, my paper tiger. So what I'm gonna show here is after you go through the exercise of doing a file clean out report, and you've now cleaned out the files, those that you wanna throw away or you wanna scan digitally, then you go back into your paper tiger and you find that shareholder file that was in your reference drawer and what we're going to do is we are going to toss that account that excuse me that file because we can now shred that information because we no longer need it. Now one of the things when you move files or delete files in the paper tiger, you're gonna see that you have that question, confirm or not. And since I said I want to confirm it, we get a little status warning called pending deletion. And the reason um, the paper tiger triggers that status is that oftentimes people are very busy in the workday when they're going through and making changes to their Paper Tiger um, application. So this is a precautionary thing so that we know that we still need to physically um, get this stuff out of that file to either move it or to toss it. So what we need to then do is go into the confirm area and in this area it's confirming that yes we've taken the shareholders agreement and we've taken out of reference 5 and it has been trashed. In this case, there might be private information in this. So remember to be conscious of scan, excuse me, shredding items when you are throwing them out. And of course, if you're not shredding them, do be conscious of recycling as well. So go ahead and confirm. That's going to confirm that we have trashed that. And when I type in shareholder, you're going to find that there's nothing there. But if I had taken the next step and I had uploaded it into my Google Drive, you would have seen it that it would have listed on my Google Drive area. Okay, so th those are some basic things about getting your Paper Tiger set up. And I'm going to stall here for just a minute because I want to see if we have any um, questions that have come in so I can customize our training to questions that you may have had when you registered. Janet, would you like to let me know what questions are out there? I don't have any questions uh, since the webinar began, but during the we uh, uh, webinar registrations, um, there um, was a question that says, what papers are critical to keep even after scanning them? Uh, is it necessary to keep hard copy documents after scanning them? That's a great question, <laughs> and I, I always have to laugh because um, I think about clients that I've worked with where um, 
They've had business cards. Do you ever go to a networking event or you collect all these business cards and you finally got a scanner and you put them all into um, your, your database, which may um, be um, Outlook, and people keep the business cards. Well, okay, let me ask you, what is the value of keeping that business card if everything that you have is in your database? Now, is there going to be any legal ramification if you were to throw out that business card? Chances are no. Is there any financial uh, rep uh, rep uh, problems if you were to throw out that business card? Probably no. So once you scan in the business cards, you can throw them out. The same theory applies to what you are scanning into your Paper Tiger um, and for Digital Tiger and your Google Drive account. Think about what are the repercussions if you were not to have the hard copy of that, of that paper. If you were to have, for instance, a birth certificate and you were to scan your birth certificate in there, you would not be throwing that out because that is a critical uh, piece of paper that you need to present uh, upon request. So something like that, I would not be, uh, first of all, I probably wouldn't even be scanning it. I would keep that just in my Paper Tiger um, database um, managing my paper files. For instance, if you now have a tax return, in 2011 you got your files, um, you went to your accountant or you did it yourself and you have all the backup information to your files for your tax return, you may want to um, electronically store your tax backup information. Now those, do you need, ask your accountant, do you need to have the original documentation of all those receipts or um, 1099s or W-2s, whatever you get? Do you need the originals of those? If you do, then you keep them. If it may be more convenient to have a digital file as well, and in that case, I would think it would be okay to have both electronic and paper files. Legally, are there legal ramifications if you were to shred a piece of paper? Okay, maybe for um, a marriage license or a divorce decree or a death decree. Those are things that you need to have the original copies of. So again, you can have it electronically, but you definitely want to keep them in paper format as well. If you have a lease on a piece of property, that may have a gray area. Do you really need to keep a paper file of a 42-page lease, or is the electronic copy okay? So if it's re relative to your situation, if you have any question, go to your financial or legal advisor to find out what the requirements are. You can find lots of articles online, and I think we even have some on our blog post with the Paper Tiger of where experts, including myself, have indicated um, some great guidelines. So find out what works for you, and again, check with professionals where you don't need, where you're really not sure. Do you have another question there, Janet? Um, yes. Um, or one question. Um, one question is, how do I switch over from the old version, and is it hard? And I'm assuming that they are talking about switching from the desktop version. To, okay. uh, Paper Tiger online. Uh, it's not hard. All you would need to do is uh, purchase the plan that you need, uh, whether it be uh, Pro or one of the multi-user um, plans. And I, I didn't. And I'm specifically not mentioning Basic there because we can't import the old databases into the Basic plan because it's a limited plan. But for one of the Pro or multi-user plans, we can import the databases for you. You simply purchase that plan that you need, either monthly or yearly, and then email our support team at support at thepapertiger.com and attach your desktop version database. We have instructions on our, um, on our support portal on how to prepare your database to send to them. And basically, it's just um, uh, emptying the trash and um, making sure that all of your pending items have been confirmed and then export it into a, a CSV file. Um, 
and if you've used the desktop version of Paper Tiger, you would know what that uh, how what that is uh, or how to do that. But we also have instructions on that again uh, in our support portal uh, knowledge base. And then once we get that email in our support portal uh, support uh, email database, our support team will import the database for you and let you know that it's imported, and you'll be able to access your old information then. Um, okay, and another question, Anne, for you is, um, I won't help with useful item and category names. So uh, how, how, do you, how to name okay. your items and then how to name categories for those uh, specific items. And All use right. information, and mentioned the um, record retention blog. I'm going to uh, paste that information into the chat section, so be uh, uh, watch for that as she's talking. Okay, okay, great. All right, thank you, Janet. Um, regarding, you know, what are useful names? Uh, that that's a great question, and this is where um, we can be as creative as possible. And where I let's go into your reference files. So let's say you are going through your reference files, and you are having come across a piece of paper. Now. There was a time where I used to get completely overwhelmed because I would have an article, I would tear out an article from a magazine and say, oh, this is great home office, uh, a great home office article. So let's say, so I would type in the word home office and see if I have anything in my database regarding home offices. And I, I have lots of different ideas in Google Docs because I write about them a lot but I don't have any physical paper regarding home offices. So what I would do is I would go into my reference file and I would create a new file called home office. And what you do with the paper tiger is you say um, other words that will make you think of it. Articles, a real simple magazine, idea, excuse me, Magazine, um, real simple magazine ideas for organization, and what I would do is then add it to it will add into my database into the next available file number that was available. So, in the past, I may have created a file called um, article cutouts or ideas. That used to be a big file. Does anybody out there have a file called ideas and it's really thick? Well, now you can break it down and add in you know, these words so that when you're looking for a file on ideas, what's going to happen is a paper tiger is then going to download any other files that you use that word, and it'll zero you in to where you need to look for that piece of paper. So back to your, your reference drawer. Now you have it in... Um, item number four in your reference drawer. Now there, there was a word that popped out when, when Janet was referring to this question. Uh, the, the word category came up. The paper tiger does have a function called category where you can go in there and you can add a, key, a, a word. What happened to my number four? You can add home office. I just lost my little file. What did I do? Uh, you uh, sorted under category. Ah, thank you. <laughs> what, what <happens laughs> you didn't even realize. Yes. Here we go. Did you see what I just did? There's a function right here called sort, and you can go up and down. So that's exactly what I did. Is I sorted it by um, by number uh, by category, and it threw me off. All right, so let's get it back in order by the reference number. And here's number four. And category, you can go in and edit it, and you can add a category. And you can say that this file is regarding um, personal. Say that. And now we have a, you know, an area of files that are just for personal. Now, in the 10 years, as I mentioned, I've been working with Paper Tiger for 10 years now. And I rarely, and I'm going to emphasize rarely, have used category. Because 
To me, the philosophy of the paper tiger is to keep it simple. And by keeping it simple, all I want to worry about is the name of the file and other key words that I think of when I want to find that, fol that folder. When I throw category in there, I sometimes confuse myself because it's too much information. So I choose not to do that for the most part. The only time I have, we're going to add no, we're, excuse me, we could add a category there, but we're not going to do anything. The only time I have used a category is in a case where I worked at a government agency that was a power and light. It was, it was actually it was water and light, I think. And what happened was they had a location, which was their clients. So what we're going to do is we create a location. We had their clients, and um, and we'll say city of. Uh, I'm not going to say that. Okay, let's say the city of Phoenix, and we had a hundred um, clients in there. So we added that location. And then when we go in there, what happened was we had ABC, ABC um, grocery store. Now, in that grocery store, they had a file for the lighting, the light department. And they also had an ABC store account file. And I forgot to do it. We're going to edit it. And they had one for the water division. So what happens is later you can run a report of all files that are in the light department. You can run a report and see every file that is related to that category. So that helps identify anything a little bit more specific than just an item name and keywords. Now as I, as I do that, another area where um, it's kind of fun to work with it's kind of fun to work with a category, and this is for somebody who is, um, you know, they have, they want to sort things a little bit more um, micro sorting. You can take, for instance, your books, and you can categorize your books that these are reference books, these are technology books, and at some point you may want to do a clean out report and maybe move all of your technology books into your, your home office, or take your technology books, pull all of those out, and bring them into your office at where you work. So there are ways to use the category where it's helpful for you to organize a little deeper your, your Paper Tiger files, and in this case, items that you have stored in Paper Tiger. Which brings me to another question that people often have, and they say, can I organize things other than paper in Paper Tiger? And the answer is yes. You can create a, lo a location for your <laughs> cassettes. Boy, we've been using this for a while, Janet. We got audio cassettes on there. <laughs> do people still have, do we still have audio cassettes out there? Um, if you do, you can sure as heck go through and inventory them in your Paper Tiger. When you set up the file or the location, you can tell in the system where it's located, that they're on the wall in the storage area, and definitely check with Sam before removing them, because just because you have access to them doesn't mean that we need everybody can take them out. And then you can go through and list the individual audio cassettes that you have, with whatever the name is that you want on it. You can add or add keywords. And here's another opportunity where maybe you can categorize them and say, one, educational, spiritual, music, whatever you want to use as a, as a category. 
Do we have any other questions that we might want to bring up at this time, Janet? Uh, yeah, a couple is um, Eileen wants to know if there's a mobile app for Paper Tiger, and uh, no, we do not have a mobile app. Uh, we understand that it works well on the iPad and the, the tablets, but no app. Um, James wants to know what is the difference between a paper search and a digital search, and I think you've um, demonstrated that quite well. Uh, but basically, the physical search is, uh, or the paper tiger search is for your physical paper files that you're going to keep in hard copy format that you've indexed into paper tiger, and also those other physical items, such as what Ann's just talked about, the books and the CDs and the DVDs. Uh, you might have your, um, your uh, bank uh, safe box index into Paper Tiger to say, you know, to remind you exactly what's in that uh, bank safe box and that kind of thing. So those are the physical items that you would, uh, you might uh, index into Paper Tiger. And then the digital search is, of course, what you've uploaded or created in Google Docs format. Um, and again, I think Anne has uh, demonstrated that quite well. So, um, uh, and you can see the, the, um, the different boxes, the green boxes for the digital search items that, that is found in um, in, in uh, Google Docs, and then the below that is the the light blue section that um, uh, that searches the items in your Paper Tiger index file. Um, the next question. Um, is from Cheryl and she says, I would like to organize my jewelry and I have a lot. What do you think is the best way to uh, be able to do that? Ooh, a girl after my own heart. I know. I like that. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, I, I, I have to laugh because I am, I was a buyer for a jewelry company for years and I had my own jewelry company. So I love jewelry and I have not organized my jewelry. Um, but that's a darn good idea. So what I would do is I would create um, a location called Jewelry Box and say um, main jewelry case in um, Anne's bedroom or wherever you want, wherever it is. And what you would do is inventory how many items you think you have. So maybe you have a hundred pieces of jewelry. Okay, so you've got jewelry, which is one, the main jewelry case in Anne's bedroom. You may also have jewelry in safety deposit box. And what you do is you, uh, these are those at the Bank of America um, safety box. And you might have six pieces there. So what you would do is you would go through your jewelry and you would add each individual piece. And you'll say, okay, this is my David Yerman bracelet. And you might say, this is the two, say two-tone um, hook bracelet. And just add it to jewelry. So now you know that that is in there. Now this could be kind of cool because um, you can inventory your items here and know what you have. And you can also you know, have some fun with this and go into Google. And I'm going to, as I said, you are a girl after my own heart. You can go into Google Drive. find one, say this is the one that looks just like mine, you can save that picture and upload that to your Google Drive. I'm not going to get too complicated here. But you can, you can take that, upload it, and put it into your Google Drive. We could have uploaded that file if we had saved the picture. And then when you did a search, you would have had that picture in your Google Drive to go with your um, Paper Tiger inventory of that item. Yeah, so, and, and another another idea I thought about while you were saying that is um, that um, you could also uh, line your uh, jewelry pieces up uh, and then maybe even put a, a jewelry label one, two, three, four, five to match the uh, items in 
uh, paper tiger and then take a picture of that and upload that picture, uh, that digital picture up to Google Docs and then Excellent. name it as your jewelry um, to match whatever is in Paper Tiger's database. You also have a, a picture of it for your uh, insurance inventory or whatever, right. and you'd also have it. Yeah. That, as I said, a woman after my own heart. We can have some fun <laughs> with that. You know, and, yeah. and it's funny, um, I, I, I've had clients who, um, gosh, this is going back a few years, and when I was in Colorado, I had a client who had a gun closet, and they wanted us to... Um, to put in the paper tiger the gun closet because they had three houses and they wanted to show what guns were in what house because that was something they definitely wanted to manage the inventory and it's not like you're going to be you know looking up you know it to you know read it or view it but it's nice to know where it is and that's one of the huge advantages of the paper tiger online because when you yeah. have the online version if you're at your house in Aspen and you're wanting to know where that David Yerman bracelet is, you can know if it's in the jewelry chest in the house in Aspen, or if it's in the jewelry chest at home, or if it's in the, in the, bank, the, um, in the safe deposit box. So it, it's kind of cool that you can have access in different ways. And um, you know, for that, for that person who was asking about the mobile app, I'm gonna back up there because I was just reminded how a couple of years ago um, I was heading somewhere and I was not, I needed a file and I needed an application for something and the physical file was something, paper was something that I needed for my appointment and um, I was delayed so I didn't have time to get to my office to pick up the application and <clears throat> so I, I had to um, I needed to get work quickly and figure out how I was going to get it. So what I did is I went, I got on my smartphone and I went to the website app, thepapertiger.com, and you know it's not an it's not a a um, you know an app for the phone, but it is a web search. And I went into the app for thepapertiger.com and I looked up that file and I found out the application that I needed was in reference file number 12 or something and I asked somebody to go into my office pull it and to meet me downstairs in the lobby and um, I was able to guide someone using my mobile phone how to access a piece of paper in my paper file in the paper tiger now if I had wanted to so that's how the mobile you can make a mobile app work for you using the Paper Tiger. All right, we're, we're down to about five minutes. Um, do we have any um, people out there who have been kind of quiet and have some questions and they would like to um, just type in a quick little chat and we'll answer any questions that you may have thought of while we've been talking, I've been talking here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and there's uh, Linda had a question: Is uh, Paper Tiger specific to only Google, or other other options available to digital storage? And uh, currently, we are only connected to Google Docs, um, and we chose Google Docs to begin with to, because it's it's the cheapest online uh, digital storage available, and that's what our customers were asking for a an economical way to um, to keep track of their digital files. Uh, Monica is, has commented that I love the fact that you have loaned to Francis under your keywords for your books. It's an uh, easy way uh, for me to not get borrowed books returned to me. Um, using your method would help me put a stop to this. Cheryl says she's in trouble now because of the, uh, your demonstration on the jewelry, so she'll get started on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, she was you also trying off. to figure out figure out a way about the photos so um, anyway she'll get that going um, Michael wants to know uh, he says that he missed 30 minutes of the webinar and is it possible to hear it again and yes it is um, we will be um, publishing the recording as soon as it is available to us on our uh, blog under the webinar category um, just as uh, quick information, I have uh, pasted Anne's contact information into the chat section. Um, 
uh, including her affiliate link for you to purchase Paper Tiger or refer Paper Tiger, and Anne will get credit for that sale. Um, so you'll see her contact information. Just scroll through the, the chat section and you'll see all of that information, and including the blog category where we have um, retention guidelines. Okay, great. All right. Um, as we're as we're wrapping up here, as you can see, I kind of just play around a little bit with the paper tiger, and there are so many creative ideas that you can use to make the paper tiger work for you. I, um, you know, I just really recommend to people that you you did a great thing by showing up today. Obviously, it makes sense that if you are overwhelmed with paper, that you want the easiest, fastest way to get the project underway and in order. Getting online with the Paper Tiger, going through and inventorying all of your files is the best thing you can do and just get it done. Uh, you, know, you know, spend a few hours and get, you know, get the system set up. And don't worry about your historical papers. Start with what is in, in your, on your desk right now. And you know, the, the reference files and things that you have in you know, boxes that you haven't looked at in years anyway, you know, forget about them for now. Focus on what's initially, you know, causing you stress each day and get them in here and then start adding other files as you can. It's a great tool. It's changed my life. I would not be, I can't believe, can you believe it, Janet? I've been doing this for 10 years. For I 10, know, that's awesome. You know, for 10 years, I've worked with thousands of people on helping them get organized with their paper. I've told Janet and, and Jim Grady, um, who is the owner of the Monticello company, that I cannot imagine working with anyone who has paper files who doesn't use the Paper Tiger. It is the best system out there. It can get the most disorganized person organized. And all it takes is just a little focus of getting started and the daily maintenance or maintenance as you need files to keep up your system. So, anyway, that's my plug. I'd love to help you all. If you would like a 30-minute free con uh, consultation on how to use the Paper Tiger in your situation, it's not a coaching or training time. It's really just a, a, a exploratory time to see if this is the right system for you. And I do make myself available as a coach where I meet with people on a weekly basis for about an hour. And we have unlimited phone calls where we can talk and I can help you through your productivity. It's 11 o'clock um, Arizona time. And so we're at the top of our um, conference or webinar. And I thank you all for attending. Any closing thoughts here, Janet? Uh, just that we appreciate your time. And you did a great job. And uh, we appreciate all the helpful tips. Uh, which, I mean, we just, uh, the ideas just kept flowing today, so it's an awesome webinar. Thank you so much. Um, and everyone, I know that you benefited from Ann's helpful tips today, so call or email her and get on her schedule and take advantage of the special she's offering. Um, this is a very small investment if you're ready to get organized and have Ann help you implement a system customized just for you. She will help you with your workflow, not only just your filing system, but everything that you do, she, she can uh, help you with that so you can be more productive and have more time for your, um, your personal um, fun time. Um, if you just uh, don't know where to start or you're overwhelmed, you'll be amazed at how much more productive you'll be in no time at all with Ann's help.